sarcoplasma dota, tissue bacteria dota, and bacteroid dota. Mycoplasma dota because it has mycoplasma and urea plasma. These are groups of uh, bacteria that doesn't have cell wall. Okay, so unlike most of the bacteria you've learned before, these don't have cell wall. Okay, and they are they tend to be very small because they don't have cell wall. They don't have any particular shape. Okay, so their shape can be irregular. And because they don't have cell wall, they will stain gram negative. Okay, because there's no peptidyl glycan to hold the crystal violet stain. Okay, so they will stain gram negative. For fusobacteriota and bacteroidota, these two are the most common anaerobic bacteria in you, okay, in your gastrointestinal tract, these two are the most common anaerobic, obligate anaerobic bacteria. So there is no way you can study this unless you have anaerobic culture systems. From the microbiome studies, they found that the balance between fusobacteria and bacterial dota actually affects our metabolism, affects our health a lot. So, so the role of anaerobic bacteria will become more and more important in the future. So other than just uh, influencing our metabolism, there are also pathogens in this uh, phylum. Okay, either from the bacteroidaceae and also from uh, fusobacteriaceae. Because they are obligate anaerobic, so most of the symptoms that you see are usually inside your body, which means you see abscesses inside your on the organs inside your body. And for fusobacteria, it's quite easy to identify because of its pointed ends. So on slides, you can see pointed ends. And finally, for mycoplasma, these are bacteria without cell walls. Uh, they are facultative, which means they can survive in both anaerobic and aerobic environments. They are pathogens, some of them can be pathogens, but and because they lack, they don't have peptidoglycan, they don't have cell wall, they are resistant to the antibiotics that attack the cell wall. For example, the blue beta lactam 